We thought that it could happen, and it now is happening. The United States is now going after all of the companies, particularly Chinese companies that are helping Iranian uh, Revolutionary Guard uh, evade sanctions. So a lot of oil has been coming out of Iran. It's been sold on the black market. China has been buying up a whole bunch of this. The United States has gone after these Chinese companies and has seized $108 million dollars. Um, China is not happy about this. Uh, they are seeing this as the United States uh, dictating to the world. Uh, who, who decided that China can't do business with Iran? Well, the United States decided that. Did, did China sign up for that? Did China sign on to a treaty that they're going to uh, bring sanctions against Iran? China never agreed to that. And so China is doing business with uh, Iran still, but the United States is wielding its almighty dollar weapon uh, because we have the SWIFT system, and the United States has now seized $108 million from a Chinese company that was using the SWIFT network, uh, just went in there and just grabbed that money. Uh, if China wasn't incentivized to stop using the U.S. dollar completely immediately, uh, they are being all the more incentivized right now. Uh, this also is important. Not only is this going to be a direct conflict between the United States and China, but in addition to that, this means that the United States is going to start cracking down on all the um, sanctions evasion uh, oil trafficking out of Iran. The United States apparently is going to try to stop the oil flow out of Iran. And Iran is probably going to be very upset about that and is going to probably try to hit back. I want to talk to you this video about two things. Uh, sanctions in general and the blowback we're going to have on that, and also because we have airstrikes happening across Syria and Iraq right now, and Yemen and other places, I want to talk to you about these two things that do not work, sanctions and airstrikes. The United States loves sanctions, the United States loves airstrikes, but I want to walk you through a brief history, a brief history of how airstrikes just don't work and how sanctions just don't work. And yet we keep doing them. Why do we keep doing all of these things that just don't work? We, we started sanctioning Cuba. You know, Cuba's gonna collapse any day now, right? Cuba hasn't collapsed. And we've sanctioned them for many decades. We've been sanctioning North Korea since the Korean War. I mean, we're still technically at war with North Korea. Has North Korea collapsed yet? No, it hasn't. Iran. We've been sanctioning Iran since 1979. Is Iran still a problem? Why are they still a problem if we've been sanctioning them for like, you know, the past 40 years? We're closing in on 45 years. I mean, that's going to be a, a, a celebration, right? We've been sanctioning them for 45 years, and yet Iran is more of a problem than ever before. We've sanctioned Venezuela. We've sanctioned, uh, you know, just what, what countries haven't we sanctioned now, right? Uh, we used to sanction China and we decided that, that that wasn't really working out. So we decided to stop sanctioning China. And that hasn't really worked out either. So, uh, but we look around the world and we're always told by these politicians, we're going we're gonna to really hurt them. We're going we're gonna to hit them with sanctions and it's going to cause the government to collapse. Yeah, that's not true. Syria has been sanctioned uh, for over 10 years now, and they're still there. You look around the world at all the countries that the United States has sanctioned. We sanctioned Iraq. We actually did some serious damage to their economy. We wiped out about 15% of their GDP with our sanctions. They were crippling sanctions. Did that prevent war? Nope. Still got the Gulf War. It did not prevent them. Uh, it did not get them. Uh, the sanctions did not convince them to, to remove themselves. Uh, they, they, they refused to give up any ground. And then, in fact, we actually had to invade them again. So sanctions clearly didn't work there. And we go around and we just, where, where pray you, have sanctions ever worked? You know, and, and we can just sit here and wait for a while, but no one can really come up with any options, uh, any locations where U.S. sanctions have actually worked. 
I mean, sure, it makes the United States feel like we've done something, but it never brings a country to their knees. It never uh, cripples a, a dictatorship. In fact, uh, we found that his, um, like scholarly papers and stuff like that have found that U.S. sanctions actually support demo uh, dictatorships more than they actually hurt them. As you cripple the population, you actually take away the ability of the population to rise up against the dictator. And so here we are again, launching crippling sanctions on Iran, just as they now have nuclear weapons, because that makes a whole lot of sense. They're doing all sorts of nefariousness around uh, the region, and the United States' answer to that is more sanctions. Let's move on to airstrikes because uh, they killed three U.S. service members in Jordan. Um, I think we're landing on that it was actually in Jordan and that Jordan was actually lying when they said it wasn't in Jordan. <laughs> we got the best allies, don't we? We have Jordan came out and said it was not on Jordanian territory. Turns out it was, but, um, you know, <laughs> who, who says that U.S. allies never lie, right? Anyway, so they killed three U.S. service members, which is awful and shouldn't have happened. So the United States is now going to conduct airstrikes. So I know that we don't like that they killed U.S. service members, right? But do we need to at, at some point ask the question, are these airstrikes going to make, you know, any bit of difference? Are they going to make things better? Are they going to convince anyone in Syria, any Iranian-backed militias, are they going to go, gee, I don't like this anymore, I'm going to go home? Has, has that been something that we've seen out there? Nope. We dropped a hundred and, uh, what was it, 185 uh, bombs? over 150 bombs, right? We killed 39 people. Now, I'm not a military expert by any means, but if you just dropped, you know, the 150 plus bombs at random across most countries, you'd kill more than 39 people. And yet these precision guided munitions uh, were only able to kill 39 bad guys. That's, that's like one Iranian for every like five bombs. And you drop five bombs, kill one bad guy. Uh, does that, does that concern anybody? And I, I, I went on at length about this, that, that, um, uh, President Biden released essentially the list of targets. He said exactly where we're going to do airstrikes. He, he gave them a warning and they, then they fled the bases. So we basically bombed, by and large, empty buildings. And the people that we killed probably weren't Iranian Revolutionary Guardsmen. Uh, all the senior Iranian Revolutionary Guards um, officers and such were actually recalled back to Iran. We gave them enough time to get their people back to Iran. And uh, if we killed anyone, uh, they were either militiamen uh, from Syria or Iraq, uh, or they were potentially even just civilians. So, again, we're, we're just, we're bombing things just to make ourselves feel better. And don't, don't let anyone out there tell you any differently. That's exactly what we just did. We dropped a bunch of scary bombs on empty targets to make ourselves feel better, and we didn't even care about the fact that we probably killed more civilians than we did um, actual Iranian Revolutionary Guard guys. Because it's all about projecting strength. Uh, it's about, uh, well, we need to have a response. This is, in, in chess, you realize that if you lose a piece, you don't just go start doing stupid moves, right? Because you're upset. You don't start making emotional moves because you lost a piece. You need to think harder and become more disciplined and be clearer on your strategy of what you're going to do next. And yet that is not the way the United States is behaving whatsoever. Oh, uh, we get 
this bad thing happened, and so we're going to have to, uh, we're going to start bombing Yemen. Um, Yemen's still firing missiles at ships that are going past. We've been doing airstrikes for weeks now on Yemen, and yet hasn't really stopped them from shooting missiles at ships, has it? Yemen has been bombed for 15 years by uh, about a dozen countries. Saudi Arabia, um, a bunch of the Arab nations, all were together using U.S. ordinance to drop on Yemen for, for uh, well over 10 years. Now the United States and the U.K. are coming in and saying like, oh, well, we'll do it properly this time. Are we? Are we going to do it properly this time? Because it sure seems like bombing campaigns don't work. In fact, where have we seen a bombing campaign really work? Again, um, it has always been ground power. No country has, has uh, short of dropping nuclear weapons, no country has ever been bombed into submission. So why do we do these things that don't work? Why do we have politicians that keep telling us it has never actually worked in history with sanctions or with an air power campaign, but this time, this time it will work. We need to send a strong message to the Iranians. We need to send a strong message to the Yemenis. Friends, the Houthis don't give a flying flip. They're in it. They do not count their lives as precious to them. Now, I know it's hard for us Americans to wrap our brains around, whether you're in Europe or Australia. Western countries, we can't understand the fact these people uh, view their loyalty, their pride, their uh, uh, all these things higher than their lives. Their duty is more important than their lives. And by you dropping a bunch of bombs on their stuff, it actually solidifies their resolve. Are there simple answers in the Middle East? No, there's not. There's one pretty simple answer, which is don't be there. Well, let's say uh, in the Princess Bride, right? Uh, uh, never get involved in a land war in Asia. And yet the United States has broken that by how many times? Has the United States had a successful war in Asia? Uh, other than, I guess, the Gulf War. The Gulf War, we, uh, we kind of won that one, right? Uh, but other than that, the United States... Uh, and land wars in Asia have not gone well. And yet we have troops occupying all sorts of countries that uh, do not like us. We have troops in Syria. Syria is a hostile nation. We have troops in Iraq. Iraq is a host hostile nation now. They've been taken over. The prime minister of, um, or the president of uh, Iraq is actually uh, a guy that was handpicked by the Iranians. That's kind of a problem, isn't it? They've taken over the Supreme Court of Iraq. Iraq is basically a puppet uh, of the Iranian government. And that's why we, we talk about the, the uh, Shiite militias or the Iranian militias in uh, Iraq. They've basically taken over the country. They're solidifying their control across the country. And we have U.S. troops there pretending like it's a, a, it's, it's a friendly country or something. That that it's, you know, just a few terrorists out there. Friends, it's actually um, mobilized uh, militias, organized militias. That's who we're dealing with over in, it's, it's like ISIS, but on the Shiite side of the spectrum. So we got China really upset that we just took $100 million from them and have taught them never to use our SWIFT banking system ever again. We're levying uh, sanctions against Iran, um, tougher sanctions, because this time it will work. And we're using air power, uh, bombing campaign, uh, to once again... Now, I don't know, targeted airstrikes, when you try and take out certain uh, leaders, key leaders, that's one thing. But we let all of those key leaders go back to Iran. We're not hitting key leaders right now. We're just bombing empty buildings. Here we are again. 
were being dragged into World War III by the most incompetent military commanders the United States has seen since the Clinton administration. All right, friends, if you want to check out another video from this channel, uh, there's one right up here. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you over there, or I'll see you guys later. Steve Poplar of The Poplar Report, out.